My name is Karen Thomas, and for those of you who don't know me, I am a craniosacral therapist of over 20 years. I'm an author, and I specialize in autism spectrum disorders. I know for moms it can be very challenging to know that your child needs some help and not always know what to do for them. So I wanted to show you just a couple of craniosacral holds that you can do on your own child. This hold is very safe that I'll be showing you. So if your child has a lot of uh, especially colic as a child, uh, digestive disturbances, um, they have a lot of headaches, uh, anxiety. The occiput, which is this bone here in the back of the head, the lower bo bottom portion of the head, it can pinch on the trigeminal and the vagus nerves. When the vagus nerve is being pinched, it will affect both respiration, digestion, and even sleep and uh, and and sleep and uh, heart rate. So it's important to try to keep that bone in balance. And so what you can do is take the eight fingers of your hands this way and put them just on the base of the occiput. If you lift their head up, and some of you may need to do this to your child while he or she is sleeping. If your child will not lie still for you, um, you can uh, climb up to the head of their bed while they're sleeping. Your fingers will just gently rest at the base of the occiput, just like this. You're not needing to really add any pressure, just the weight of the gravity of their head is enough. You might feel the uh, movement in their neck or in the bone and things moving a little bit. That's called the cranial wave. It's important that the cranial bones are balanced because they also directly affect the brain. As your fingers are resting on the occipital bone, just go ahead and let them sink into the soft tissue. You might feel it start melting in a little bit. And um, just go along with that flow. If you only have a few minutes, just do it for a few minutes. If you have more than a few minutes, then do it for more than a few minutes. But this can be very effective even though it doesn't seem like you're doing very much at all. Often I see uh, children, especially on the autism spectrum or with ADD or learning disabilities, they will have problems with the temporal bones. Those are the bones around your ears. And what happens is that when those bones are out of balance, not only is it going to affect your hearing um, or possibly cause ear infections and things like that too, but they also it also affects the part of your brain that can um, they can trigger uh, a lot of people see anger a lot of anger episodes from that or speech issues the temporal bones uh, definitely have something to do with speech if there's any drooping in the mouth or trouble with speech especially moving the tongue that can definitely be an effect of the cranial nerve that is being pinched by the temporal bones being out of balance so what you can do and this is again it be very gentle you take your thumb and put it just on the lower inner portion of the ear. You're not going into the ear canal, you're just right here on the edge of the inside of the ear. Your other fingers, usually these two fingers, will rest on the back portion of the ear as close to the head as you can get but still being on the ear. You can then apply a little bit of pressure by pinching your fingers together and then you very, very gently can pull downward and I'm going to show you it's just a gentle movement of the wrists this is an exaggeration because you don't need to move this far but this is what you're doing it's sort of a 45 degree angle as if you're pulling the ears toward the shoulders not straight down not straight out but just a very very gentle motion downward you're going to do it equally on both sides and then what you're doing is you get a sense of taking the slack out and then again you might feel the uh, the ears moving up and down one will come up as the other goes down that's a normal motion and then they'll switch and the right one the other one will come down and then they'll switch and the other one will come down as the other one comes up you may or may not tune into that motion don't worry about that if you just will apply a little bit of pressure again not too much and then again do this for at least a few minutes if you have more than a few minutes that would be great just be very gentle and do it very slowly. When you're done, it's very important that you come back up to neutral. You bring in that slack again before you let go. Don't be out here and just let go. You want to bring it in. 
Um, but that can be very, very calming to the system. Um, and usually, uh, I've found that a lot of children, it helps them focus better at school, etc., too, um, and helps their learning. But those are just a couple of simple things to, that you could do at home uh, on your own child. And, um, and just, uh, you can practice on your spouse if you like as well and see how they like it, do these things, and just kind of um, play with it. But just, you know, as long as you're gentle, then it's safe.